The evidence is outside. All you have to do is look. You can tell it's been cold around here and snowing. We're supposed to get some more snow this week. So what we're going to do tonight is just have a little mental calisthenics, just to do something to warm up our minds a little bit. So I'm going to ask you a little riddle. I, I think it's a riddle. I'm not sure all the rules or regulations needed to call something a riddle, but we'll call it a riddle anyway. So let's take a look at this question we're going to put up here in a wall. Psychologists agree that people just can't keep one thing. What is the one thing people can't keep? Exactly right. Someone just said it. Let's take a look. The answer is there. Let's take a look at the answer. The one thing people can't keep is a secret. When was the last time someone told you a nice, juicy secret? And the last time someone told you a secret, did you tuck it away in your pocket, put it in your heart, decide not to tell anyone? It is very difficult to hold on to a secret. You see, that is a simple, clear message of today's gospel reading. Be careful what you post on Facebook or Instagram or any type of social media platform. Be careful what you share with a friend, especially if it is a secret. Because they say that when you share a secret, that secret is going to be shared. Now, the propensity of people not to be able to keep a secret, that's been going on since the beginning of time. That's what happened in today's gospel reading, the inability to keep a secret. Now, the gospel comes out of the first chapter, Mark, verses 40 to 45. And not to be redundant, but in this gospel reading, the slipper approaches Jesus. He kneels down right in front of Jesus. And he pleads with Jesus, Jesus, heal me. Now Jesus looked at the leper, and Jesus is moved with pity. So Jesus touches the leper, and the leper is healed. And after Jesus heals the leper, Jesus asks just one small little request. Now the leper asks Jesus for a massive favor, heal me. And Jesus just asks one little request from the leper, and that request is in verse 43, first chapter of Mark. Let's take a look. And he said to him that Jesus said to the leper, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof to them. Don't say a word about what I did. Just show yourself. Uh, it turns out to be that leprosy had an adverse effect on the largest organ on the body. It was a flaking, a scaling of the skin. It covered all the skin on the body from head to toe, from all the way to the point of your extremities. When a person had leprosy, they never had to say they had leprosy. All you had to do was look. Now, lepers did their best to try to cover their body. But eventually, their feet, often their hands, their forehead, their cheeks, those parts were exposed. And when they had leprosy, all you had to do was look. So if a person had leprosy and then they're cured of leprosy, all you had to do was look. Jesus realized, hey, look, do me a favor. Don't say anything to anyone. Just show yourself. Because they will look and they will see without explanation that your leprosy is gone. Can you do me that favor? And what does the leprosy do? How does he repay Jesus with the quest when Jesus is really saying, keep it a secret verbally, show yourself visibly, but don't say anything verbally. Verse 44, first chapter of Mark again. Now the leper went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He is telling people, well, look what Jesus did. And so everyone's running to Jesus. Jesus wanted to stay there, and he wanted to stay put, and he wanted to spread his message even more. But because he could not keep the secret, again, people could see that his leprosy was gone. The secret was, don't tell anyone that I did it so I can stay here. But he blabbed. Jesus had to leave. Jesus had to say to himself, it is so difficult in life to pull a knife out of your back when someone slid it into your back. That's what that leper did. Just one little request. Don't tell anyone, please. But he decided not to. You think about your life, and you think about the years in your life, and you think about those times, and hopefully this has not happened to anyone here, but I suspect that's not the case. It might have happened once to you, several times to you, where you said to a friend, 
look, this is what's going on. This is my secret, don't tell anyone. And often you're going to respond by saying, okay, I won't. And usually you say, okay, I won't, because you're dying to hear what they have to say. Because you know if you say, well, I'm going to tell everyone, they're not going to tell you, so you say, I won't. But often we do. And if a friend of yours has ever shared a secret that you told them to someone else, and eventually it ripples its way through the town and your community, and the place where you work, it is one of the greatest hurts of life. You know, it reminds me of these four, these four ministers. It was a couple of days before the start of Lent, which is actually for us just on Wednesday. These four ministers went out to eat and they're sitting around a table having supper and they said, you know, the Catholics do a really nice thing. They have this thing called confession and, and what you do is you reveal to the priest one of your secrets or what you've done wrong in, in your life and priests absolve you. And the minister said, well, let's try that. Let's go around our table. Each one of us share something we're doing that we're not proud of. It's our secret we're holding on to right now. So one minister got started, he said, well, fellas, uh, I'll tell you, my biggest secret that I, I think I'm hiding very well is, is I like to drink. As a matter of fact, I, I usually have a few belts before the start of any one of my services. I don't think anyone's caught on. They looked and they said, that's, that's definitely not good. Della fell, it was his turn, he said, well, fellas, my biggest problem is uh, I love to gamble. And he says, as a matter of fact, he says, sometimes to... To afford my gambling, I sometimes slide a few dollars off the top of the collection plate. No, that's, that's definitely not a good idea, the other one said to him. You're really breaking trust, you do that kind of stuff. The other guy said, well, my biggest problem is, uh, you know, I'm married, but, uh, you know, I've been unfaithful to my wife. As a matter of fact, I'm really, I'm going through a time where I'm being unfaithful to her right now. They said, that's definitely not a good idea. The fourth guy said, well, fellas, you know, my biggest problem he said, I love the gossip. He said, matter of fact, I love the gossip so much, I can't wait till we get out of here. And you see, that's the concept of, of not holding on to the secret. How important it is to hold the secret. When you share someone with some, something to someone else, hold on to it. Don't share it. Don't tell other people. I read an interesting little article that just said this, and I'll leave you with this. It's a powerful little thought. The definition of a friend is someone you share a secret with and they tell no one. The definition of a Judas is someone you share a secret with and they tell everyone. The gift of the secret. Whatever your secret is tonight, if you're holding on to one, hold it to yourself. Because if you decided to put something on social media, that's not going to stay there. The best person to tell a secret to, yeah, probably the priest in a confessional. But the really best person to share your secrets with is the person who already knows your secret, Jesus Christ. Then kneel down before him and say, Jesus this is what's going on in my life. Help me, guide me, heal me, cure me of what I'm going through right now because I'm doing something that I shouldn't and the only way I can stop is with your assistance.